The truth is that if you want to stand out as a developer, you cannot be coding the same projects as everyone else. The job market today is very, very competitive. And I can tell you that the recruiters have seen the same projects hundreds and hundreds of times. So if you're not able to code something unique and put that on your resume, you are going to impress absolutely no one. But the challenge is that it's not easy to come up with these kinds of unique projects that at the same time hit on all the other points like being easily understandable, showing enough technical skills and being visual that make up a great resume project while at the same time being unique and something that the employer has not seen before. So in this video, what I'm going to do is simply give you five very unique and also very impressive Python project ideas so that you can just copy these projects and not have to worry about coming up with the ideas themselves and instead just focus on coding the projects. These are all ideas that I have personally had for projects that I actually want to code and even monetize in the future, but for various reasons or because I just haven't had the time, I have not actually ended up finishing these projects. So I thought in this video, I'll just give these ideas to you so that some of you can go and make these projects into reality reality and then put on your resume or even turn into a full business. The first idea is a resume generator. Now this is not going to be a pure Python project and most of these aren't going to be. And the idea here is that you would create some sort of a resume template in some kind of front end framework, like for example, React where you just take a proven resume template, you make a React version of it, and then you would have a Python bot that you can give a description to of all your experience. And then what you could do is then send that description to let's say the ChatGPT API or some other LLM that then is gonna churn back to you some very optimized bullet points that it is then going to plug into this resume template that you can then download as a PDF or something like that. I actually started doing this at some point. If I can find it, I'll put some footage on the screen of what I was able to do. And basically why I think this is a good idea for specifically a coding project is that making a resume, at the end of the day, once you learn how to do it properly and everything like that, it's just about following a couple of principles that I thought could very easily be automated. Like for example, the whole template of the resume. There are already tons of very proven templates that are proven to be something that passes the resume screening software and things like that. So I don't understand why so many people just don't use a ready-made template already. So you could just take a template like that, make a React version of it, and then you don't have to worry about the formatting or anything because it's already done for you. And then in terms of the bullet points on the things that you actually write on the resume, there is already a very well tested and proven framework and like ways you should be writing these bullet points and it turns out that ChatGPT, for example is actually quite good at giving you very good bullet points and turning descriptions of what you did at a job for example into very powerful and quantifiable bullet points so you could just pretty much automate this entire process of making the resume and it's also really good because it teaches you about actually making a good resume. You're going to have to learn about what's a good template, things like this. It's kind of fun and something that is going to be very easily understandable for a specifically a recruiter that is looking at your resume and they're going to look that that's really cool. That's quite unique. The next idea is some kind of a video editing bot. Now, obviously this is something that I have been thinking about a lot as a professional YouTube video creator. And there's a lot of things that I think could very, very easily be automated by some kind of bot that could just save a ton of time. For example, when I am editing a YouTube video, like I'm making the first rough cut of this YouTube video, the footage that I look at, the raw footage, looks nothing like the footage that you actually see in a final YouTube video because there's so many mistakes, there's so many pauses that I just need to cut out before I can make it into the final product. You don't even realize just how bad your boy is actually at speaking to a camera. The amount of mistakes and cuts is takes so much time actually. And there is software already that can do this for you, but I think it will be actually quite easy to use. For example, this library called FFMPEG, FMBEG, however you say this. This is like the gold standard of video editing libraries when it comes to Python. I believe it should be possible for you to simply get the audio levels of any given frame in your video file that you give to this library. And then based on those audio levels, just, just cut out, for example, bits that are silent. So you could just make this bot that just deletes all these silences. You could you would play around with the different like levels and things like this to get it right. 
and then before you start editing a video, you could just run it through the script and you would just save so much time very, very easily. So there's probably many different things that you could come up with here. With this library, it is very, very comprehensive. There are other ones like this one, MoviePie, that's a bit simpler. I believe it's probably built on top of this other library. So I would probably use this one if you want to do something serious. So what I would say here is go and play around with this library, see the kinds of things you can do if you are into video stuff. And there's probably many cool things that you could come up with. The next one is a cost of living calculator. Now this is a project that I started building. I probably will finish it actually. Basically the idea is that you take data of cost of living from different cities around the world. The one that I use is one of my favorite websites in the entire world, which is called numbeo.com that just has tons of different cost of living data for a lot of different cities. And then what you could do is using that data basically give you an estimate of how much your specific lifestyle would cost in a different city. So for example, the way you would do this, you would input how much you spend on food in your current city, how much you spend on rent, how much you spend on transport or whatever. And then you would compare it to a different city where for each of those line items in your consumption, it would look at on average, for example, how much more expensive is food, how much more expensive is rent. And it would then calculate based on that specific lifestyle that you have, how much that exact lifestyle would cost in the other city. And this is much more useful than what you would find in many places where they just give you an estimate of like, okay, cost of living in Austin is $4,000 and New York City it is $6,000 because it is always very dependent on your specific lifestyle and where you like to spend your money is going to affect how much your cost of living is in one city versus another. Idea number four is some kind of raw data visualizer. So this is more of a category of projects rather than a specific idea. And as a category, it's not super unique, but what I want you to do is find a very unique application of this idea. So what do I mean by raw data visualization? Well, essentially in the world today, we have a bunch of data about all kinds of things. We have census data, we have financial data, we have flight data, we have so much data out there, but for that data to actually be useful, you usually need to do something to the data. And oftentimes this will mean like, for example, visualizing the data. Let me just give you an example. There is this website called layoffs.fyi, which for us programmers is a pretty sad thing to look at right now. But the idea is that they have found a bunch of data out there about layoffs that have been done at different companies. I don't know exactly how they found the data, but they have this raw data. The raw data alone doesn't necessarily tell us anything. What tells us a lot is this visualization right here that shows the number of layoffs based on different months and different years and different kinds of companies and things like this. So this is a very good example of taking raw data and then making this data useful by visualizing it in some kind of way. And it doesn't even have to be a visualization. It can just be some kind of aggregation that makes it easier to understand and easier to draw some sort of conclusions and learn something from that data. Another example is the website that I just showed you, numbeo.com. They've done an excellent job of taking in a bunch of data about different cost of living items in a bunch of different cities and then giving it to the user in a format that makes it useful. That for example, allows you to just compare all these items in different cities. Usually this will start with some kind of web scraping. Now I have a bunch of videos about web scraping on this channel, where you will use a web scraper to actually extract the data online and then use that data to then create some kind of a visual or aggregation or whatever. One example that I started building at one point that I didn't finish was to find flight data. So data about specifically the prices between two given cities. And then what I would want to do is create some sort of a map where you can just look at a map where there's like lines connecting different cities and the line will be like colored based on the price or like it will just show the price of like the average flight between those two cities. Now, this is going to be challenging because there's so much data out there. There's so many city combinations. You could just start with a couple of different cities, but I will leave those challenges for you to figure out. So that's one example. And then we have my favorite ever example of this, which is called the female delusion calculator. So what this essentially has done is they have taken data from the US Census Bureau. So essentially all the demographic data that I believe is publicly available on like the US Census website. And then with that data, they've essentially calculated how unlikely it is to find a given man with certain characteristics. So for example, if you want to find a man that is between 20 and 27 years old of any race, 
or minimum height six foot because women usually tend to want a six foot guy that makes a minimum of six figures or something like that and then you find out that the probability of finding that kind of person is 0.67 percent so the point is that usually women will be like he needs to be at least six foot he needs to make at least six figures but it turns out based on this data that this app nicely visualizes the probability of actually finding a guy like that is less than one percent which shows the delusion of females apparently not gonna get into that discussion any further but i just thought that was interesting the last idea is going to be an apartment hunting bot now whatever city you live in probably has some kind of website that aggregates data about different property listings or like rental listings where you would usually go to find places to rent if you're looking to rent an apartment what you could then do is create a bot so basically a web scraper that wraps that data and then sends you a notification when there is a new listing below your price or if you can grab other characteristics that you're looking for you could essentially avoid the manual work of having to go and check these prices every single day you could just simply receive a notification with your python bot whenever a desirable apartment appears on the website now i actually made a full tutorial of this exact project which you can go watch right here so if you're interested in that project go watch that video there and if you're interested in more super impressive python project ideas then you can watch this video right here so go watch one of those videos next and i'll see you in the next one